Araucaria bidwillii, Wikipedia article audio. Araucaria bidwillii, the bunya pine, is a large evergreen coniferous tree in the plant family Araucaraceae. It is found naturally in southeast Queensland, Australia, and two small disjunct populations in northeastern Queensland's World Heritage listed wet tropics. There are many old planted specimens in New South Wales, and around the Perth, Western Australia metropolitan area. They can grow up to 30 45 m. The tallest presently living is one in Bunya Mountains National Park. Queensland which was reported by Robert Van Pelt in January 2003 to be 169 feet in height. The bunya pine is the last surviving species of the section bunya of the genus Araucaria. This section was diverse and widespread during the Mesozoic with some species having cone morphology similar to A. bidwillii, which appeared during the Jurassic. Fossils of section bunya are found in South America and Europe. The scientific name honors the botanist John Carn Bidwill, who came across it in 1842 and sent the first specimens to Sir William Hooker in the following year. Distribution Ecology Native in Queensland Historically trees were found in populations recorded as abundant and widespread in suitable habitats of southeast Queensland and wide Bay Burnett. In these regions of Queensland the natural ecosystems growing bunya pines have sustained European agricultural occupation and have been fragmented now into the areas of the Blackall Range, Bunya Mountains, Upper Brisbane River Reaches and Upper Mary River Valley. Natural ecosystems having bunya pines are found again approximately 1,000 km to the north, in the wet tropics region of northeastern Queensland. There the species' natural populations are rare and restricted. Two outlying restricted populations are known in the Cannibalan Falls and M.T. Lewis areas. A. bidwillii has a limited distribution within Australia in part because of the drying out of Australia with loss of rainforest and poor seed dispersal. The remnant sites at the Bunya Mountains and Mount Lewis in Queensland have genetic diversity. The cones are large, soft-shelled, and nutritious and fall intact to the ground beneath the tree before dehissing. The suggestion that extinct large animals perhaps dinosaurs and later, large mammals may have been dispersers for the bunya is reasonable, given the seed's size and energy content, but difficult to confirm given the incompleteness of the fossil record for coprolites. At the start of European occupation, A. bidwillii occurred in great abundance in southern Queensland to the extent that a Bunya Bunya Reserve was declared in 1840 to protect its habitat. The tree once grew as large groves or sprinkled regularly as an emergent species throughout other forest types on the Upper Stanley and Brisbane Rivers, Sunshine Coast hinterland, and also towards and on the Bunya Mountains. Today, the species is usually encountered as very small groves or single trees in its former range, except on and near the Bunya Mountains, where it is still fairly prolific. A. bidwillii has unusual cryptogeal seed germination in which the seeds develop to form an underground tuber from which the aerial shoot later emerges. The actual emergence of the seed is then known to occur over several years presumably as a strategy to allow the seedlings to emerge under optimum climatic conditions or, it has been suggested, to avoid fire. This erratic germination has been one of the main problems in silviculture of the species. The cones are 20-35 cm in diameter and can weigh as much as 18 kilograms and are opened by large birds, such as cockatoos, or disintegrate when mature to release the large 3-4 cm seeds or nuts. Cultural Significance 
Although there are no reported dispersal agents for the seeds of A. bidwillii, macropods and various species of rats are known as predators of the seeds and tubers. The bush rat was observed caching bunya seeds some distance uphill from parent trees, possibly allowing ridgetop germination. Brush-tail possums were mentioned as carrying the seeds up trees. In a study in 2006, the short-eared possum was shown to disperse the seed of A. bidwillii. Natural populations of this species have been reduced in extent and abundance through exploitation for its timber, the construction of dams and historical clearing. Most populations are now protected in formal reserves and national parks. Uses A recent problem in small forestry plantations of A. bidwilli in southeast Queensland is the introduction of red deer. Red deer, unlike possums and rodents, eat bunya cones while still intact, preventing their dispersal. The bunya, bonyi, Bunyi or Bunya Bunya in various Australian Aboriginal languages was colloquially named the Bunya Pine by Europeans. However, Araucaria bidwillii is not a pine tree. It belongs to the same genus as the monkey puzzle tree and is commonly referred to as the false monkey puzzle. The Bunya tree grows to a height of 30-45 meters, and the cones, which contain the edible kernels, are the size of footballs. Cultivation The ripe cones fall to the ground. Each segment contains a kernel in a tough protective shell, which will split when boiled or put in a fire. The flavor of the kernel is similar to a chestnut. A Bunya festival was recorded by Thomas Petrie, who went with the Aboriginal people of Brisbane at the age of 14 to the festival at the Bunya Range. His daughter, Constance Petrie, put down his stories in which he said that the trees fruited at three-year intervals. The three-year interval may not be correct. Ludwig Leichhardt wrote in 1844 of his expedition to the Bunya Feast. The 1889 book The Useful Native Plants of Australia records that the cones shed their seeds, which are two to two and a half inches long by three quarters of an inch broad, they are sweet before being perfectly ripe, and after that resemble roasted chestnuts in taste. They are plentiful once in three years, and when the ripening season arrives, which is generally in the month of January. The bunya trees pollinate in southeast Queensland in September, October, and the cones fall 17 to 18 months later in late January to early March from the coast to the current bunya mountains. When there is heavy rainfall or drought, pollination may vary. The large festival harvests may vary between two and seven years. When the fruit was ripe, the people of the region would set aside differences and gather in the Banyi Mountains to feast on the kernels. Footnotes As the fruit ripened, locals, who were bound by custodial obligations and rights, sent out messengers to invite people from hundreds of kilometers to meet at specific sites. The meetings involved ceremonies, dispute settlements, and fights, marriage arrangements and the trading of goods. The Aborigines' fierce protection of the trees and recognition of the value of the timber, led to colonial authorities prohibiting settlers from cutting the trees in the 1842. The resource was too valuable, and the Aboriginals were driven out of the forests along with the ability to run the festivals. The forests were felled for timber and cleared to make way for cultivation. In what was probably Australia's largest indigenous event, diverse tribes up to thousands of people once travelled great distances to the gatherings. They stayed for months, to celebrate and feast on the bunya nut. 
The Bunya gatherings were an armistice accompanied by much trade exchange and discussions and negotiations over marriage and regional issues. Due to the sacred status of the Bunyas, some tribes would not camp amongst these trees. Also in some regions, the tree was never to be cut. Indigenous groups such as the Waka Waka, Githabol, Kabi Kabi, Jairawar, Gorang Gorang, Buchola, Kwandamuka, Baragam, Yuman, and Walailai have continued cultural and spiritual connections to the Bunya Mountains to this day. A number of strategies including the use of traditional ecological knowledge have been incorporated into the current management practices of the National Park and Conservation Reserves with the Bunya Mori Ranger project currently operating in the mountains. Indigenous Australians eat the nut of the Bunya tree both raw and cooked, and also in its immature form. Traditionally, the nuts were additionally ground and made into a paste which was eaten directly or cooked in hot coals to make bread. The nuts were also stored in the mud of running creeks, and eaten in a fermented state. This was considered a delicacy. Apart from consuming the nuts, indigenous Australians ate bunya shoots, and utilized the tree's bark as kindling. Bunya nuts are still sold as a regular food item in grocery stalls and street side stalls around rural southern Queensland. Some farmers in the Wide Bay slash Sunshine Coast regions have experimented with growing bunya trees commercially for their nuts and timber. Since the mid 1990s, the Australian company Maiden has used bunya for the soundboards of its BG808CL performer acoustic guitars. The Cole Clark Company uses bunya for the majority of its acoustic guitar soundboards. The timber is valued by cabinet makers and woodworkers, and has been used for that purpose for over a century. However, its most popular use is as a bush food by indigenous foods enthusiasts. A huge variety of home-invented recipes now exists for the bunya nut, from pancakes, biscuits and breads, to casseroles, to bunya nut pesto or hummus. The nut is considered nutritious, with a unique flavor similar to starchy potato and chestnut. When the nuts are boiled in water, the water turns red, making a flavorsome tea. The nutritional content of the bunya nut is, 40% water, 40% complex carbohydrates, 9% protein, 2% fat, 0.2% potassium, 0.06% magnesium. It is also gluten-free, making bunya nut flour a substitute for people with gluten intolerance. Bunya nuts are slow to germinate. A set of 12 seeds sown in Melbourne took an average of about six months to germinate and only developed roots after one year. The first leaves form a rosette and are dark brown. The leaves only turn green once the first stem branch occurs. Unlike the mature leaves, the young leaves are relatively soft. As the leaves age they become very hard and sharp. In the highly variable Australian climate, the spread of actual emergence of the bunya maximizes the possibility of at least successful replacement of the parent tree. A test of germination was carried out by Smith starting in 1999. Seeds were extracted from two mature cones collected from the same tree, a cultivated specimen at Petrie, just north of Brisbane. 100 apparently full seeds were selected and planted into 30 cm by 12 cm plastic tubes commercially filled with sterile potting mix in early February 1999. These were then placed in a shaded area and watered weekly. Four tubes were lost due to being knocked over. Of a total of 100 seeds placed, 87 germinated. The tubes were checked monthly for emergence over three years. Of these seeds, 
55 emerged from April to December, 1999, 32 emerged from January to September in 2000, 1 seed emerged in January 2001, and the last one appeared in February 2001. Once established bunyas are quite hardy and can be grown as far south as Hobart in Australia and Christchurch in New Zealand and as far north as Sacramento in California and Lisbon and even in Dublin area in Ireland in a microclimate protected from Arctic winds and moderated by the Gulf Stream. They will reach a height of 35 to 40 metres, and live for about 500 years.